2020. It was a weird year. It was a long year, but it's now over. It's 2021 and it's on to better and brighter things. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start today's video. What's up guys and welcome to Mondays with Mike. I hope everybody has had a great holiday season and happy new year. This week we'll be discussing the 180 degree shutter rule and how this can help or hurt you depending on if you follow this rule. So I came up with this idea when a friend of mine decided to show me his video and I watched it and said it looks really good except it seems a bit off. There's something jittery about it. I don't know what it is. What were your settings? He tells me his settings, everything looks good except his shutter speed was one thirty-two hundredth of a second, which is way too high unless he's shooting, hold on, 3200 divided by two, 1600. I didn't math well there. If he was shooting 1600 frames per second, then one thirty-two hundredth of a second would be fine for his shutter speed because that would be following the 180 degree rule. The 180 degree rule means if you're shooting 23.997, or better 24 frames a second like we are here then your shutter speed should ideally be 1 48th or if you're shooting on a mirrorless DSLR it's gonna be 1 50th if you're shooting at 30 frames a second or 29997 then you're gonna be shooting at 1 over 60th or 1 60th of a second so to follow the 180 degree rule simply you're going to take your frame rate and double that and that's gonna be your shutter so again 24 frames a second, we're gonna be shooting, since we're on a mirrorless here, 1 50th of a second. Just make your shutter double your frame rate whenever you're shooting. So let's go ahead, we'll go shoot some footage and I will show you what it looks like if you shoot the appropriate shutter speed or if we shoot a completely wrong shutter speed. But first, let's grab the gear. Let's go. Um, here. Get the gear. Zena, you ready? You ready for this? We're gonna go outside. All right, so we are going to use this, this, and this to demonstrate the 180 degree rule with shutter speed. All right, I had to grab a tripod, make this easier. Power the big girl on here. Ooh, buddy. Next thing you need, a quarter. Why do you need a quarter? Well, if you watched the last video, you'll know why. Click the link in the description. This is why you need a quarter. Tripod plate. Tighten her down. Boom, bada bing. It ain't going nowhere. There we go. Looky there. Okay, so we've got the camera set up. Now we're gonna shoot a few shots and we'll come back and show you the difference between the shutter speeds. Dry your poles off. Go get some Good girl. Gotta make sure we got plenty of water, don't we, Bean? All right, guys, so we're back in the office and we're gonna take a look at some of this footage. The first group of shots was in 24 frames a second. So that means following the 180 degree rule, it's gonna be at 1 50th of a second if you're shooting on something like a mirrorless or DSLR, or if you're shooting on something like we were with the red camera, you can dial that in more and get that true 180 degrees and get that 1 48th of a second. So looking at these first few clips, you'll notice there is motion blur. Nothing seems weird, nothing seems off. It all seems natural because this is what your eye naturally sees. So if we replay this clip and we pause it and then zoom in a little bit, you'll notice everything in motion, the ball and Xena, have blurred to it. The background is in focus, it's sharp, there is no motion blur because it's not moving. So everything in motion is going to have a little bit of blur to it. That's why you can't pause a moving shot and take a screen grab a video and get a clear image. So this next clip as Xena's rolling around in the grass, 
you'll notice there is a little bit of motion blur, but there's not as much because she's not moving as quickly. So if we go ahead, we play this clip again, and we pause it while she's in motion, you'll notice that she's not super sharp, and that's because of the motion blur. There is less motion blur in this image because she's not moving as quickly, but you still have the motion blur and everything still looks natural. So the reason that this footage doesn't look off or abnormal is because, again, your eyes naturally see motion blur. A good way to test this is to take your hand, hold it in front of your face, and wave it back and forth. You're gonna see motion blur, and that is because this is what you see every day, and this is how your eyes work, and that's why we use the 180 degree rule. This next example is shot at 24 frames a second, but at 1 800th shutter speed, or at a 10.8 degree shutter angle. Okay, so this clip, as we watch it, we notice everything seems off. It's a little jittery. It's smooth, but it's not smooth. And the reason it's not smooth is because there's no motion blur. And like the last clip, when we paused it, we had motion blur and Xena as she was running was kind of blurry. If we pause this one while she's running, look at her, she's tack sharp. And the reason for that is because there is no motion blur when shooting at such a high shutter speed. And if you really think about video, video is a bunch of photos. At 24 frames a second, it's 24 photos in one second. At 1 800th of a second, it's 800 photos in one second. So you're gonna have less motion blur and everything's gonna be much sharper. So while it may sound good to have a sharper image, it's not gonna look right to the eye and so that's why we follow the 180 degree shutter rule. So the next thing we're gonna do is look at two more examples and these are shot in 120 frames a second. The reason I chose 120 frames a second is because more cameras are capable of shooting in 120 frames a second and therefore more people are using higher frame rates to get slow motion footage and we wanna make sure our shutter speeds are correct. So our first example is 120 frames a second following the 180 degree shutter rule which sets the shutter at 1 240th of a second. So watching this clip, you'll notice there is still motion blur, even though it's 120 frames a second and it's slowed down. Now, our eyes obviously can't slow down everything that we see in real time, but we still wanna have motion blur when shooting higher frame rates and trying to get that slow motion footage because otherwise it's not gonna look as good as the rest of the footage you've shot. Again, we can pause this one really quick. We'll notice there's motion blur on Xena and she's not tack sharp because she's moving and we've added motion blur to this image by following the 180 degree shutter rule. This last clip, again, is 120 frames a second. However, like the last example, we shot this with a shutter angle of 10.8 or a shutter speed of one over 4,000. This has again eliminated almost all motion blur and it doesn't look as good to the eye. Everything looks a little bit off and is not nearly as natural. If we pause this one again, you'll notice that Xena is gonna be much sharper because there's less motion blur due to there being more images in a single second. Again, we've got 4,000 images per one second versus 240 images per one second following the 180 degree rule. All right guys, so that's all we've got for today. I hope you liked this video. It was just a basic video showing why we follow the 180 degree shutter rule and use that 180 degree shutter angle. If you wanna get more into the science of this, Gerald Undone has made a great video on it and I will post the link below. And if you wanna see more examples, there's a great video done by Polar Pro that I will also post below. But again, I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. I would love to hear from you. And if you have any ideas of videos that you would like to see in the future, I would also love to hear from you. And lastly, if you have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.